Hey everyone, it's uh, 10 p.m. right now, but you know, it's Tuesday, so that means it's a Tidy Tuesday analysis day. Um, today, I think we're going to be actually analyzing NHL goals. So I'm not really a hockey guy, I'm actually from Iowa, so um, we'll see what we can do here. But when we're looking over the actual data set, it comes with three data sets. One where I guess it has the game goals, the top 250, and then also the season goals. And we look at the, the data set, we see top 250 means, I guess, the ranking of the players. So the top 250 players. So that's pretty cool. And then game goals, it actually has goals for each player for every game. And then for season, we actually have each player's season goals. So I'm not really someone who knows a lot about hockey. However, I think we can still do something kind of interesting. And one of the things that I was thinking about doing when I was looking at this data set is we could actually let's do that in HL. We actually maybe do some like some linear models, but instead of trying to actually predict something, we're actually just going to use it to analyze the um, coefficient. So it's more of an actual marketing problem. It's it's used in marketing a lot where people will, will try to pr predict like propensity of someone who will buy a product and analyzing what kind of factors make them buy the product. So in this case, we're gonna actually gonna load in the data first. And we're gonna look at, I think game goals will probably be the best. So let's do game goals and just do a basic glimpse. Okay, and I'm actually gonna pop this up too. So we see here we get a player, a season, some kind of a ranking for that season, uh, a date, a game number, their age, team, and all this other kind of stuff. And one thing that I'm thinking, at, thinking about is maybe we should predict how many goals they'll they'll score right per game, and then we'll actually kind of like make a model and kind of predict what we're gonna expect each player to score for each game. So. Let's 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 start doing that. Let's let's first collect our data and do some maybe some data cleaning. So game goals, and one thing that I think is going to be a, kind of a cool idea is maybe make a model for each player or maybe each player grouping. So we're gonna select player season, and we'll do game number. So I think that corresponds to season, their age, team, opposition team location oops location we'll do goals assists and i think shots okay so now we have their player the season the game number their age what team they're playing on what team they're facing whether it was a home or away, the goals they made, the assists they made, and also the shots they made. And I'm actually going to do some formatting because we want to predict goals. So that way we have goals right here. And one thing that we should probably see is who are the top players? Or let's, let's just count how many players there are. So we can see that there's, in this data set, there's only about 42 players. And I think that makes sense probably because I think it's doing the top... Let's see here. Top 250 player, top 250 things or career goals. Okay, so these are the players who, you know, during the season had the top 250 goals ever scored during a season, which makes sense. There shouldn't be about 250 players who do that. So, you know, if you're good, you're probably going to be good for a while and you're going to probably break multiple records. That kind of makes sense. Okay, so we have 42 players, but I'm actually going to make this into uh, just so I don't have to explicitly say it all again. I'll just call it a DF for fun. And maybe we should figure out how many goals each person has actually made, right? So we'll do a, a group by a player and then we'll just do a summarize. And then uh, total goal, goal, goals equals sum goals. And we'll do total assists equals total equal some assists and then we'll do you know what we'll do total shots equals
equals some shots. Okay. And let's see here. I'm actually going to make this go down a little bit. Um, let's first kind of arrange it by total goals. Who is scoring the most amount of goals? And it's Wayne Gretzky. That's that. I think I've heard that guy, right? I think I'm sure people who uh, who know hockey know more than me, but that kind of makes sense. I've heard him bef heard about him before. Um, let's see who's the guy with the most assists too. Wayne Gretzky again. So that guy is both a all scorer and a team player. Always like to see it. Who's shooting the most? Oh, Jaromir Jager. Okay, cool. You. Know I, I kind of have an interesting idea. Let's do a mutate and say like goal to shot percentage. So how many how many shots does it take for them to make a goal? So shots per, uh, we'll do per goal. And it equals total shots divided by total uh, goals. Sweet. And then we'll do a uh, arrange by shots. Oops, just shots. Oh, I kind of, I kind of don't like how when you do a range, it automatically sorts it from like lowest to highest. I kind of wish it was just the default on highest to lowest. Maybe that's just me, but I think it's always. I always feel like I'm always adding D E S C or just the minus sign to kind of get away with it. Maybe they should just say uh, like a hierarchy function or something like that. But whatever. Okay, so Justin Williams, he has 10 shots per goal. So he's not very good. Ooh. But he, he takes a while to shoot, um, to make his goals. But he makes a lot of, he, he, he does a lot of shots. So actually, we're going to arrange it by that. This is the, the one time when I criticize a range for using descending. I actually need to use it without the descending. That's, that's, a, that's a little ironic. Um, Jerry Curry. This guy is a very efficient shot maker, right? So he's... It only takes some, if he shoots five times, you know, one of those five times he's shooting a goal. Cool. And maybe we'll do a plot. Why not? Um, AS X equals, we'll say since X is the explanatory variable, we'll say total shots results in total goals. And we're just going to do a simple point. Oops, point. Okay. And then maybe you might, we'll do a, We'll just say smoothing too. Let's see what goes in there. Yeah. So it's kind of a linear ish pattern. Yeah. And you know, th there is a distinctive positive relationship where the more shots you make, the more goals you'll actually, you'll probably make too. Yeah. That makes sense. So now we kind of did an EDA, not a great EDA. I'm not going to lie, but we kind of, we did something where we kind of looked at it. One thing I'm going to look at actually is let's do a ggplot. Um, actually, let's do select uh, assist shots and then uh, goals, right? And then we'll do a gg ally. Oops. Then we'll do like a gg duo. And the gg ally is probably one of my favorite um, packages. Uh, for my for my classes, we usually have to do an exploratory data analysis on our on, on a bunch of numerical data, and GG Ally can basically do most of the assignment. Um, I remember for one project for data mining, we actually just created this huge faceted ra uh, faceted graph where it just showed all these bivariate relationships, and we just kind of like projected it onto a uh, screen and we just looked at it for like 20 minutes to figure out some kind of relationships. And we were actually analyzing like, uh, like website data and trying to predict co like consumer, um, purchasing and stuff like that. So that was, that was a lot of fun. And GG ally did most of the work for us. We actually just were staring at charts. Uh, we didn't have to do anything crazy. So it's going to be running. It's kind of being slow for some reason, probably because there's a lot of data. Let's see, DF has 49,000. Yeah, that's going to be that's gonna be a little slow. We might have to aggregate it a little bit, but uh, we're going to let it run, and we're going to think about how what else we're going to do. So when I'm looking at this data, we should probably... I think it's kind of a stupid idea to make 42 models. That seems, you know, a little, a, a little too much. So I think one thing that we could do is make it so it's like a grouping. 
where we'll say, okay, we'll just make little bins where it's like, if you're in the, like the top 25 percentile or top 10 percentile, we'll say you're like an elite level person. If you're in like 10 to 20 percent range of goals made, then you'll be kind of like a semi elite level. So I think we're, how we're going to do this is we're just going to, let's see here. We're going to do a group by, oops, group by, and then we'll say uh, player. And then we'll do uh, mutate, and then we'll say total goals equals some goals. And then we'll actually ungroup it, ungroup it. And I think one thing that we could do is just do a, a ranking. So we'll say uh, player rank, and we could have done player rank. Oh, there we go. Okay, so we have assists with goal, assists with assists. So we have a uh, linear relationship. Um, and then we have assists with shots, where shots is the x-axis. Okay, so it's kind of kind of in the, all over the place. Goals and assists right here. Okay. One thing that I think is kind of interesting is, is how shots are just all over the place, right? You know, you have some, um, what is it, heteroscedacity or something where the variance is changing a little bit. Weird. Okay. Anyways, that's that's our EDA for now. We're, we're not going to go too much into it. We're, okay, goals and assists. Pretty, uni almost pretty uniform. But we need, one bad thing about this is we don't really see the heat map of it, right? We don't know if there's like 20 um, points right here or it's just one point. It's kind of just all over the place. We're actually going to, you know what? I'm going to change this. I'm going to do, we're going to make a better one, a better one. So key equals key value equals value. Okay. And then I think I'll do ggplot AES X equals key Y equals value. I think geom point, and I think it's a facet grid, right? Where, uh, let's see here. rows equals what it's like bars key i'm not sure if that's right but we'll see if that'll work okay how do i make it? oh well and then actually i i got an idea gather key equals key value equals value and minus goals and then we'll do ggplot aes x oops, x equals value y equals goals uh color well eh, yeah we'll do it plus geom point plus facet wrap key scales equals free cool this will this will do it this is basically what we wanted anyways and then instead of GM point, so this is the same. This is kind of the same thing we got from the GE, GE, GG um, duo or GM duo. We'll do GM jitter and see what's going on here. And the jittering. Okay, so right here we got some crazy things. Alpha equals point one, so we can kind of have a like a heat map going on, where it's, if it's more dense or there's more points around, it'll be darker. There we go. So this is this is what we kind of wanted to see. Okay, so we can kind of analyze this as almost a heat map where if we're predicting um, goals, so assists and goals, generally people with are, are kind of centered around right here. You know, center around zero to two goals and zero to two assists. Where we're also our axes are actually a little bit skewed where assists are a little underrepresented where um right here is six and where right here is actually five okay and then with here with shots and goals we do still see a kind of a linear relationship let's do a geom um smooth see if that does anything and maybe we can kind of just see a basic uh trend from that and again it'll probably do like some kind of lowest or something i'll use it again Okay, so we couldn't do it for here. It's, it couldn't figure it out. But here we, we can see some like almost like 
you know, the more sh- the shots taper off, you know, it's not a linear thing where if you're making 10 shots or if you, if you're shooting shots where it's like only if you five shot for every five shots you make, uh, you make one goal. It's not going to translate directly to t- uh, 10 shots where if you make 10 shots, then you'll make two goals. It has this kind of like logarithmic um, curve going on, which makes sense, you know? Okay. Yeah. We kind of got a lot of, I kind of got a little sidetracked, but we're going to do this first. So, I'm going to rank these guys where um, we'll do rank equals dense. I think it's dense rank. And then we'll say uh, total goals. Okay. So just to make sure it's not doing anything crazy, we'll do select rank and total goals and then arrange by rank one. Does that, that's a 273. That's, that's pretty small, right? We'll do a unique. Okay. So yeah, we gotta we gotta reverse that. So we'll say uh, let's do minus. It's a quick and dirty way to do it. Okay. So now that we have our ranks of all forty two players, I, got, I we have to start thinking how are we gonna make this rank smaller. So I think we'll we'll just do um, hmm, four rank divide by 10 i think divide by 10 and it's plus one so that way i think we'll have yeah there we go we have like percentiles so if you're between zero and i think uh 10 you'll be ranked one right so that means you scored a lot of goals that's great and we'll we'll actually kind of highlight that by selecting select rank and total goals and then we'll do uh uh unique unique right so um oh so we do have some ties okay arrange rank okay so we do have some ties i think that's how dense rank works oh no we don't have ties we we, yeah that makes sense because if you're in the top percentile man i should have did a i'll say bin rank and we'll say bin rank boom okay there we go. This right, right here. So if you're in, if you're below ten, you'll be. If you're in the top nine, or you'll be in the uh, bin one, and then it'll go to four. Cool. So that's what that's what we wanted, right? Bin rank in our rank, and actually we'll just we'll change that to just rank. We just wanted to use that to verify that we're not doing anything crazy. Although I would probably recommend you not to do the rank call it rank because I think there are functions for that um, and you could lead into some weird issues okay so I'm gonna do rank and then everything so I just wanted to format that so we can kind of get a good idea of how we're gonna start modeling this um, what are we looking at so I don't think we actually need season that doesn't seem like a relevant thing we don't we probably don't need Ooh, well, we could use game number two. Game number could be maybe a player's really good at the mid-season than the beginning of the season, right? That'd be interesting. We don't need total goals, so we can remove that. Um, we kind of just use that to, to rank it. Uh, age. Okay, let's see. Here. Yeah, so we got we to gotta mess with age first. We see how it's 20 and 0, 1, 8. We don't really know what that means. Um, let's let's kind of look at it. Let's look at our data table. Age, age and years and days. So we gotta separate that. That's okay. We're, we're gonna start cleaning it anyways. Okay. So to separate these ages, I believe that's just using the separate function. Yes, um, an age and we'll say into equals, see uh, year and days. Sweet, year and days, okay. Um, mutate. And then we want day days to be 365 days. So we'll just do a, a decimal for the actual age. So mutate age equals as dot integer year plus as dot numeric days divide by 365. That won't do anything, right? Um, and then, oh, it'll be at the end. 18, let's make sure that that makes sense. Yeah. So we have that. Now we'll we'll deselect our uh, 
year. We don't want year anymore. Minus days. Probably don't need season anymore. Okay, so we have we have our goals made. We have the player. We have the game number. The team, opponent, location, assist shots, total goals. Oh, we don't need total goals anymore. Okay, and then we have age. Cool. I actually kind of like the game number idea. Maybe we, we could bin that too, where it's like, what what would we classify as uh, mid-season, later half of the season? Or we could just do a standardization of it. We do like a min-max normalization or just a standardized normal. I'm trying to think. Hmm. Yeah, we'll worry about that later. I think with if we're using a linear regression, we don't really need to worry about that, but we can we can do that. Just that. Mutate. Um, I think there isn't there a normalize function? Standardize. Yeah, we can just we just that. Um game num equals mean game num x minus mean so game oops game num minus mean divide by sd of game num and we'll say standardized game num okay select standardized game num and then game num Oh wow, there's a lot of game numbers. Okay. I think that's fine then. We'll just we'll leave it like that. Okay. So now we want we don't need game num anymore. Minus game num. And we just have our goals, our player, our team, our opposite position our location assist shots rank age standardized okay what did i what am i forgetting right now oh yeah i forgot my uh my rank where's my rank at oh there it is there's there's my rank bees okay and we also don't need our player names we're just gonna make i've, de I've decided we're just gonna make a model for for linear regression models for the top 10 percent you know between 10 and 20 30 20 and 30 and 30 and 40 so we don't need a player anymore okay oh what the oh i i gotta ungroup this ungroup oh we should actually group, group this by rank there we go Ungroup, select. Yeah, so I actually grouped it by rank because we can't. We don't want to do it by player. Um, we want to aggregate it a little bit more. So we're just gonna uh, we're gonna group it by rank, which makes a little bit more sense. Um, then we're gonna deselect player. Okay. Now I'm just gonna kind of format it so it it looks nicer. So we want to predict goals. We want also want goals. Uh, we'll do rank goals and then everything right so now we have our rank our goals our game numbers oops we don't need our game number anymore uh minus oops okay so we have our rank our goals the team that they played on opposition location assist shots age standardized game number you know I think there might be some type of data leakage going on with the team. We might have to do another EDA a little bit and just kind of look at what is our ranking. So we're going to do group by uh, rank. Oh, uh-oh. Oh, we got to add that on. So I'm going to just do that first. And then I'm going to do a a group by rank I'm gonna count what teams we're on I don't want to make it so okay let's see here 
Okay. Let's see. Okay. And then I'll do count rank. Okay, so there, there's a there's a decent sample of like 22 teams, 24 teams, 16, 17. Okay. And then actually I'll do a ungroup arrange by team. Actually, we'll do a count team and rank. So it seems like every every team kind of has a, a decent distribution of like good players, like high high tier players. Even though all these players are high tiered, um, just like high tiered players and low tiered players. So we don't we don't have something where, oh, this one team has all the great players. So that that way we know that there uh, there's some kind of contribution to it. So we're actually gonna call this model data. I think we have everything. We have our our rank, our goals, our team, opposition, location, assist shots age sweet let's run the model okay so what's cool about r is if you want to even though we're just running um we're just running four technically just four models it is kind of nice to be able to um know that you can run a bunch of like almost micro adjusted models right uh so we're going to start doing that i'm trying to figure out mm, Yeah, we're just gonna do that. So we're actually gonna we're gonna use the broom package, um, which is a great package for these kind of like simple sat sat things. Where uh, R is definitely known to being a statistics language. However, it kind of sucks for statistics. It's not very as uh, user friendly as the tidyverse is. So a guy named I think David Robinson invented up the broom package, which really makes um, the statistical tests, such as linear regression, ANOVA, and chi-squared, into a very tidy-esque module. So like, if you run a test, you can actually plot it very easily into pipes. So that's what we're going to do. Um, we're going to just do a basic linear model. So we'll say linear model equals LM. And then we'll do uh, goals, boom, right? Let's see if that runs. It should run. The, boom. And right there, we made four models for each little ranking of, of tiers, right? So now you're kind of under asking, like, oh, how do we even look at these models? So we'll just do tidy linear, oops, linear model. And we got it. Okay. And I'm going to do something kind of cool where AS X equals term, Y equals estimate color equals rank plus geom call facet facet wrap and we'll do rank and i'm going to do something funny and say scales equals fix because i want the axis to be fixed so we can kind of compare and contrast these these linear models oops i'm going to do a chord flip Oh, whoa. So this is not a pretty chart at all. One thing I'm going to do is actually with linear models, we kind of just want to look at significant values. So we're going to do a filter P value less than or equal to 0 0.05 instead, just to clear it out a little bit. Okay. And I can't really see it, so I'll do fig dot height equals twenty, fig dot width equals twenty. Okay. Interesting. I'm not even gonna do a chord flip. This is very confusing. That's even more confusing. Okay, we're not going to do that. We're just going to look at it. Okay, so each interesting team. So we can see right here when they play for, I think when we said their team, 
they're scoring less goals, right? Weird. We can see with the opponents, it'll, it's a little bit different. Hmm. <laughs> Let's see. I'm trying to think of how we would do this. Okay. GG plot. AS X equals term reorder term uh, estimate. Y equals estimate. Fill equals rank. Plus geom call plus facet wrap. Oops, scales. We're gonna make it free now. Oops, rank scales. There we go. That that makes it a little bit better. Um, so I guess we're gonna have to do scales equals free. I know I said I wasn't gonna do it, but. I, I, I kind of like it anyways. So now we have something interesting. For the top tier, for the top tier guys, we can see that shots plays a huge factor, plays a largest factor. And we see how these teams actually kind of prohibit um, the player from making some goals. However, for the second tier people, we can see how ED, the team EDM has definitely helped a lot. Opponent Quebec has helped a lot. Maybe I think it's Quebec. Maybe Quebec kind of kind of isn't as good. And we can also see like age it doesn't really play that large of a factor. Yes, it it does hinder it a little bit, but it's not crazy. And then we can see how most of these possibly influence these lower tier guys. But we do have a main one main problem with this is for one thing we actually don't have. Um, these, these values are not actually, uh, one hot, not, um, they're not dummied. So what that means is you're going to face a lot of like culinary, culinary issues. Um, so what we're going to have to do is fix that. And I believe the way to do it is you make it, uh, let's see here. It's dot. And then it says, uh. Um, I think it's just like plus plus zero, right? Plus dot and then plus zero is how you do it. Yeah, and then we can kind of do a linear model. There we go. And when you say plus zero, it means we set the intercept specifically for zero. And that's kind of makes sense for how dummy variables work because dummy variables have some kind of contribution to the intercept where say if it's male or female, if it's male is a one, when it's zero, we'll add that as to the intercept. So since we aren't doing it, where it's where we basically have a male and a female column, we'll just try to negate the fact that we don't have dummy variables. With, instead, we actually are using one-hot encoded variables. So we'll actually just switch the y-intercept to zero, and that should fix that up a little bit. Okay, so now we're actually just gonna run this again and see what we're missing. So I'm gonna say, and we get, eh. Seems we get different results, right? We get m way more contribution for the first for the first team. Okay, again, and then linear regression one hundred and one. Also, we are doing something that we shouldn't really be doing. And one thing is, we actually do know, or we can make a we can make an ex uh, we can make an educated guess on it where. Our goals and stuff, I think there's probably some type of like interaction effects. And interaction effects is when you just kind of multiply it. So for example, I think most team, most players will shoot more on certain opponents, right? So we're gonna have to add that type of effect. Um, so we're gonna do that. We'll do that and we'll say opponents times uh, shots. Let's see if that'll work, right? And now we have more of something, and we're actually we're just gonna filter the p values and say uh, less than or equal to point oh five. Oops, p dot p dot value, right? And right here, we could see that interaction effect is is significant. 
and we're actually gonna plot this out too. So I'm gonna I'm gonna copy and paste this again, and we're we're gonna learn a little bit more about oops, confounding variables. Where in marketing, this is a huge problem where confounding variables are basically overestimating a coefficient for a variable. Um, if we just use one variable to predict something, it might get a nice R squared value, but in reality, uh, there are other values that are actually affecting it that might be correlated or some type of thing like that. So instead, we're, we're actually overstating how much something contributed. So for example, let's look at this. Um, or we might have been understating, right? So once we add these type of things, we can see how, oh, whoa, we got a rank in there for some reason. Uh-oh. Um, let's see here. How would I decrease? Oh, God. Yeah, that work. So we can see that these shots now added more, where as a uh, QUE is much lower now, right? It's much lower. Okay. Oh, wow. How could I select minus rank? There we go. Oh, no, we don't. Oh, God. Actually, I'm going to look it up. How to remove a column in a linear model. Oh, what? I, did, I had that. Okay. There we go. Okay, so I guess you just put that in there. So again, I, I was actually kind of messing up the thing. That's weird. Why is it? So I'm just going to add that just to make sure we don't have any data leakage. But it shouldn't change much. OK. So if you notice something, we came from right here having 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. All the way down to three, three actually statistically significant variables. And that's pretty good because our interaction effects actually added something to it. So we can now see a much better picture because we added, okay, we added some interactions where we know or we believe that given the person or given these, these, uh, these tiers of people, they might shoot more on like weaker teams, okay? Uh, so we can see that, oh yeah, shots definitely plays a huge thing. Age kind of hurts a little bit and assists kind of hurt a little bit. Cause if someone's making more assists, they might be, uh, not shooting as much for, th for their own self interest. But we can see here how there's still a lot of terms right here. And even though, um, some terms increased and some terms decreased, we have a better picture of it. We can see how the opponent opposition with the interaction effect of shots plays a huge role in uh, the third tier. So I want to equals 20 fig dot width equals oops, 20. So let's, let's expand this plot a little bit. Oh yeah. And we can see right here. What's, what's interesting about this one is it kind of seems like it's dependent on the team. Maybe there's like a huge, like super team for the EDM. Not sure. Uh, but we can see right team EDM and team EDM are huge for two and, and fours. Hmm. What, one thing that I think would be also interesting to model, right. Is uh head to head matchups. Maybe that'll fix a lot of it too. So we'll do op times, uh, I think it's team, right? Team. Yeah. Team. So let's model that and see what that looks like. Okay, it's loading. Since we're adding a ton of interaction effects, it's gonna take a little bit. 
Okay, so 34 seconds. Let's just kind of look at these this plot a little bit more. Yeah, it's 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 kind of interesting. We can see how shots team TPL. I think with the most interesting thing is shots matter. When these guys are shooting, they're scoring points. Oh, whoa, whoa. Okay. And now we can see the these head to heads are are huge, right? EDM times NYI, EDM times NYR. These guys matter. And maybe maybe we might just remove teams all like for for the entire thing, right? Maybe we want to create an actually simpler model. And we're going to we're just going to do that too. And this one will be our final model for today. Um, so I'm going to do minus opponent minus team. Just just the bare minimum stuff and then we'll do a group by rank do uh we'll just do mod yeah we'll do linear model equals lm uh goal oops goals goals pop and then say minus rank right and then we'll say uh, data equals dot okay and we'll tidy those linear oops linear model and boom we still have that one thing that is kind of interesting we can actually do the augment so what we're gonna do that and we'll say uh oops we're gonna we're gonna create a final thing where we're just gonna add some real generic effects or we're not gonna add rank but we're gonna say i bet shots times location play something i bet assists times shots play some type of role um oops plus assist times shots um and also we'll say no rank oh we already have that rank and we'll say no intercept his home away They're probably not get it dummy okay and then we did an augment right uh so that that just applies this model to all the data sets and then we can kind of just plot it out we're asx equals dot fitted y equals goals color equals rank and we'll do gm point let's see what that looks like okay oh rank oops mutate rank goes as dot factor rank uh oh row ungroup that's what I group wrong that's what I group wrong again boom okay and then actually we'll do a geom jitter alpha equals point sweet so the model it's not the best model right but we we can analyze a lot from this right um linear model we can analyze the p values very quickly and extract some t sort of, of 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 effect so if we do AS x equals term y equals actually what am I doing I'm just gonna oop. right we can analyze something home and away don't really matter right home and away if they're at home or away they they still go so we can we can probably filter out however shots age always matter too and that's kind of what we expect and one thing that we could look at is we know oops i'm gonna do um yeah actually we'll do that um uh, <clears throat> but one thing that we can take away is like oh okay if someone make wants to make a lot of goals they shouldn't sh go for the assist they should go for broke and shoot a lot they might not win the game but they're gonna make a lot of goals right 
And that's basically how you should do it. Um, that's how, and that's basically how you can kind of analyze um, models really fast. One thing that I was I was thinking about is we can actually kind of go over the uh, I think the the glance function because uh, I was trying to figure out what it was called again. But I think this will yeah right here, and this will kind of give you uh, this model summary statistics of it, right? Where we can kind of see how. You know, it doesn't really describe, it doesn't really explain a lot of the variance. You know, maybe, uh, maybe it's not the best, but if we look at our residuals, you know, we can, we can see that our fourth model is probably the best for that model. And we can apply it to our other, um, our other ones too. So if we wanted to just look at these guys, so let's look at, let's compare it to our very complex model. Uh, so that's, Let's do uh, that one. Actually, we'll do, yeah, we'll do that one. And we'll add all of this, all of this weird stuff, right? All these interaction effects too. And we'll, we'll see which one's better. Oops. right so we added a lot of crazy interaction effects uh and then we're going to compare it to just a simple model that's just comparing you know shots times location we think they'll shoot a little bit more on the location if they're uh, home or away and we'll just say you know assistant shots will probably have some kind of relationship with each other so we'll just create that kind of interaction too it's a very simple model, but let's compare it to a, this really crazy little um, interaction effect model that you probably actually do need more domain knowledge to actually know. But we'll, we'll kind of compare it. And what we are looking for right now is we would hope that this complex model would probably explain more of the variance. Um, and it would have like lower BIC scores and stuff like that. But again, we're not gonna, you know, we're not gonna cry if it if it's not better or not. Okay. Ooh, wow, it's taking a while. Just a generic linear model, but you know, linear models take a long time too. They're not. They're still fast, but when you add a bunch of other computations, it's going to be a little bit slower. And also, just to just to explain the the I guess the modeling thing, it's saying like this little tilde thing is like y to x, so y to everything, and the little period is like saying like oh we're going to compare goals to all the other uh, variables that are in the data set. But we're also adding, you know, opponents times shots, opponents and team, stuff like that. Oh, that's why I had, I had a augment. Um, so it has like opponents times shots and then opponent to team interaction um, minus rank because we don't want to do that. And then we have shots times location, assistant assist times shots, um, a lot of weird things like that. Actually, I need a... I need a stop that uh this was this was supposed to be a colon stop oh no no so yeah it's just doing opponents versus time shots interaction effect opponent and team interactions not including rank to avoid any data leakage shots times the location whether it's home or away and then also assist times shots. Okay, we're looking at. And as we would have expected, our R squared values are a little bit higher, right? We get we get three percent performance. For about about a three to four percent performance, 
our BIC scores are much sm higher too. So that's pretty cool. And then look at our resi oh, oh, oops. our residuals are a little bit smaller. So this model is a little bit better than our original model. Okay. So let's see here. Um, so I hope you learned a little bit more about linear regression and spe specifically about interaction effects and um, confounding variables. That's it for this Tidy Tuesday. So I'll see you hopefully next week.